All right. Um, very quickly, your thoughts on the China, that we, the new relationship that we have with Beijing vis-a-vis -vis what we have with the UK and America? Some are calling it the second scramble of Africa. Um, this is such a debt that we're seeing. Fantastic that we are getting loans from China to build, but at the expense of a lot of um, the debt and the future of, of this country and the future of our children who will be paying for that debt, we can sustain this. True. And um, I, I agree with you that uh, this kind of borrowing for our, the size of our economy is not sustainable. Do we say then no to China? 60 billion US dollars see, is what they've committed see, to the African see, continent. You see, uh, when you're working with the other nations um, or the international market, you have to also measure your weight mm -hmm. and understand your circumstances uh, so that when you borrow, you're borrowing and you're able to repay without exerting undue pressure and distress on, on the people that uh, uh, you're supposed to serve. Now, what has been happening, unfortunately, in, 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 in Kenya is that there has been a very strange appetite for debt and not concessionary debt. And you'll spare me, I'll give you some two minutes, but commercial debt. Because we need to ask ourselves, uh, these debts that are coming so rapidly, what is their profile? What is their structure? What is the interest rate on these debts? What is the repayment period? Is there a grace period and so forth? These are fundamental issues that the government has not been answering satisfactorily. And let me just give you a very quick example. Right now, the public debt is at 60, almost 60% of our GDP. Mm -hmm. China has grown to become our largest uh, creditor, single creditor. Um, by June this year, they stood at about 520 billion Kenya shillings. Uhuru has just gone and executed another agreement for 380 uh, billion shillings. So China alone is aging closer to 1 trillion Kenya shillings in terms of debt. Now, this, the next one that comes into play is Japan. Mm -hmm. Japan has maybe about 96 billion of debt to the Kenyan people. Then you have France, which is at about 66 billion. Then you have Germany, which is at about 33 billion. Then you have Belgium, which stands uh, maybe at about 15 billion. Then you have the other institutions, some of the multi multilateral ones, uh, World Bank, IMF, and so forth. These ones stand roughly at 520 billion. Can I say now this brings you to the situation where we are in. All right? Now, what is critical is that are we repaying this? Are we able to repay these debts? Or are we getting debts where the grace period is so short, the interest is so high? Most of the loans that are coming from China are commercial. They're not grants. Most of them are loans. So we need to check our relationship with Beijing. So we need to check our relationship with all our creditors. And as far as I can see, Kenya is becoming a candidate for a serious rescheduling problem, a serious debt rescheduling problem with its creditors. We have been there before. I was Minister for Finance. I led Kenya to reschedule its public debt or its debt with the, with the, uh, the international community. And the way things are, and, that, and it's not a good thing, by the way. Going back to reschedule <laughs> debt is, a, is, is, is not the best of things. Uh, we have been through this before in the 90s and the way we have seen public debt grow. Whoever is going to be sitting at Treasury in a few years' time may find that one of his first assignments is to go for debt rescheduling.
it's quite a sad thing even here in South Africa just this week the economy now has been declared under recession and that you can see what's happening towards the African continent but back here at home mm -hmm. um, we've seen you know Bob Davidi pushing for the Mulembe unity mm -hmm. but as a national leader shouldn't you not be pushing for national unity um, by the way you know Mulembe means peace uh, and it means coming together um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong in calling for the unity and the regional of, 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 of a community mm -hmm. or the unity of regions. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely nothing wrong, provided you know very well that the unity you seek is not a unity to uh, oppress other Kenyans, but it is a unity that will help you resolve the challenges that the communities are facing. In uh, in, the, in the Western region, I keep on coming back to the sugar saga. Okay, this is a very serious matter. And, and uh, I, I know the president, uh, Uhuru, has designated uh, Mashujia Day for 20th. Right. I mean, which is designated as 20th. He wants to be in uh, the, the Western region of this country. And I would tell him that, uh, Mr. President, as you come there, uh, don't be cheated about so many other things. So what do you the see? fundamental issue Kenyans in that region will want to know is that this sugar dilemma, what does he think about it? What does he say to the people who imported uh, sugar and brought the sugar industry to their knees and some have gotten away scot-free? These are the answers that people will be asking for. We welcome him. But I, uh, as a friend of his, I'm telling him, please come with answers. some serious answers. Do you think by then he would, have had, he would have tabled those answers to the people of Western Kenya? Well, he has uh, time to reflect on it, and I think he should. Because you don't come and tell uh, the, the Western people that uh, uh, we have gazetted new rules for the sugarcane industry and so forth. Uh, they will not listen to that. They will really want to know that how come that there's contraband sugar in this country. How come 32 billion worth of duty was given away to importers who are now quietly preparing themselves to come and buy the same uh, uh, sugar companies under privatization program? So what do we do? Because this sugar and maize issue keeps to become a recurring one year in, year out. It's getting quite tiresome and it's hurting a lot of Kenyans. Precisely. Let us uh, look at this thing seriously, and I would like to urge the government, uh, the, the way they have now moved on uh, uh, some of the, 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 the dealers who have visited uh, pain to maize farmers, I think it is important that they also arrange a similar program out for, to help the sugarcane farmers mm -hmm. and to show that there's, they're equally uh, uh, treated as the maize farmers. Mumia Sugar, one of the biggest companies that mm -hmm. we see here in Kenya, is going under uh, going to be um, re acquired, auctioned to be more specific. What do we do to revive that? Um, it's a long process. First of all, it's the whole policy. Some of the policies are trade-related policies. And uh, a few days ago, I told people that even President Trump is revisiting some of his trade policies mm -hmm. in the context of NAFTA with Canada and Mexico. He's revisiting some of his trade policies mm -hmm. in the context of trade with China and Europe. And so is China doing that? So this is an indicator that in terms of Kenya, we also need to revisit and review some of our trade programs, whether it is within the context of COMESA. These are issues that we cannot run away from now. Trade must benefit uh, all the countries. We cannot sustain a scenario where uh, we are subsidizing a farmer in Brazil, a farmer in, in, in uh, another country, and yet we are killing our own farmers. So let us bite the bullet as a nation and start looking at some of these policies. Now, in terms of, of uh, what can be done, I think one of the first things you can do is that uh, these people who got brought in sugar, and didn't pay duty. Surely, the government can recover that duty 
and even dedicate it immediately mm -hmm. to the sugar industry. As we close off this conversation, Honorable Mdavadi, what does the future of your political career look like? Um, it's going to be challenging. Uh, at this point in time, I must continue to, to, to consolidate ANC um, and uh, to continuously encourage uh, uh, the Kenyan people that this is our nation. We must all work for it. We must all commit ourselves to it. Uh, we must be able to make sure that uh, there is a common legacy of the Kenyan people. A Kenyan nation that should be prosperous. And my desire is to work towards that goal. Will you vie for the top seat of the nation? I have said I'm interested. I have said I'll be on the ballot. And I've said uh, that at the end of the day, I will offer myself to the people of Kenya and they will make their decision. Speaking of legacy, mm -hmm. what, what is your legacy? What do you want Kenyans to remember you for? Um, at this point in time, I think. They should remember me for as a person who was passionate and who remains passionate to see a prosperous country. That is what I would like to see. Somebody who would like to build a just society. Somebody who would like to have laws and make people accountable. And speaking on that note, I think just coming back to this petroleum thing, when we hear stories that uh, our legislators say they were duped uh, or they were misled, uh, you start asking yourself that perhaps Kenyans should now really agitate for the legislation of the recall clause. Because we cannot have a situation where our legislators, 300 of them plus, saying they were duped. They were ignorant. These are very serious issues. Right. I think Kenyans should now start pushing for the recall clause. And that's where we would love to end the conversation. Hopefully okay. in the future we'll have time again to sit down and take a look at um, the state of the nation. Then hopefully it would be in better standards. Thank you so much for your time. Honourable Mdavadi, who 